see if it works this time. Let me see, can I type here? Error sending message. Oh boy. Hey guys, I don't even know what is going on today. Um, but we're working on it. Hey Sabaya, I have no idea what is going on. Um, how's the, how's the stream? Is that, is that any better? Slightly maybe? I don't know. Hey Erica, hey Deborah, hey Nicole. Far from perfect, but it's a lot better than Okay, well that's a start. Good grief. I just need a minute to like breathe for a second. Everything that has, Actually, yeah? It was just my settings, you're great. Really? I'll be darned. Okay, so. Oh, hey, Pam and Joe. We're doing great. <laughs> oh, there's a hummingbird. Hey, little hummingbird. I love you. Y'all, I could cry. I'm so tired and frazzled. I made 42 hard boiled eggs today and peeled all of them. Sandy says, Hi, all I can see is from your neck up. Well, that's all I have on camera. It's from like, boop, right here. <laughs> um, oh, how do I put my brain in order? I'm going to sip some water. We're going to be doing some crafting today, you guys. So, aw. <laughs> we should have hot water by Monday. We finally were able to lock a plumber down. Um, all of the other plumbers... Uh, were like they had like a four week wait list um, before they could even come in troubleshoot uh, so I guess we weren't the only ones who had flooding basements and stuff in our neck of the woods um, and then we're helping out with a graduation party and I guess the eggs are out of my hands now so that's fine um, and we still gotta put together the charcuterie board and then but that's like a tomorrow thing that's for future me to deal with um, and, oh, I am, like, wildly addicted to the show alone now and can't function <laughs> because I gotta know who wins season seven. If you spoil it for me, I will cry in your face. So no spoilers. We do not have hot water. We hopefully will have hot water on Monday. We have been boiling water on the stove, uh, for dishes and bathing. So, yep. Uh, we did get a bunch of packages in the mail. I did something that I haven't done in a long time, and that is ordered a bunch of crap off of AliExpress. So I was like, I need bulk components now. And Randy was like, you know, it's going to take three months for it to get here. And I was like, oh, yeah, too late. So we're going to be opening some AliExpress shipments today to see what on earth three months ago Vaughn purchased. Um... So that's going to be fun. But thank you guys so much for being here and coming and hanging out. And if if you came to the other live stream that crashed, um, then thank you for following me back over here. Nicole says, you're busy, busy, busy. It, it does seem that way. Hopefully flipping the camera around will not um, kill the stream. So I'm going to get this sorted. Oof, oh, it's been crazy busy. And I'd like to say, oh, things will slow down on Monday. Like, after we get the hot wheat water, the hot wheat. Um, but no, I don't think things will ever slow down. This is just life now. <laughs> Aw, yeah, Stephanie. <laughs> She's like, thank you for giving us a place to hang out anytime. Oh, boy. Do, 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 do. So we've been working on, oh yeah, and tomorrow I get to, with Randy's help, which will be much appreciated, uh, get to make or inflate and tie around 700 balloons <laughs> for, hey babe, the thank you, the new thank you stickers came in. Yeah. You gonna come take them from me? 
So we're trying out a new thank you sticker. These are actually smaller than what I thought they would be, but oh, I think that'll be fine. Smaller. I think they'll just still do the trick. Hopefully. And then there's two more right here. Doop -doo 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 -doo. Oh. <laughs> Sabaya says, by mouth, please tell me you have an air compressor. It's a lot thinner. Like, this is not a better deal. Okay. Well, now we know. <laughs> Uh, we've got one of those little pressy downy pumps that like blows up the balloon for you. So that'll be good. Hopefully. So, oh man, I am like scattered in a million different directions. Hey, Kelly. Ooh, Witchy Gnome says, so I realized the other day that I hadn't actually let the glowstones get a good sun charge. They are bright blue. Ooh, right on. <laughs> hey, Pro. Hey, Drax's mom. Ooh. Because it's most, like, when I try to list it out, there's not really a whole lot of stuff going on. I'm just here doing the live stream, opening packages, everything's okay. So I don't know why my brain is like, clearly we're dying. <laughs> so, is this anxiety? Yeah, probably. <laughs> so, a lot of these components that I got from AliExpress, I'm going to be using as bases for electroforming over because I don't really trust whatever alloy it is that they, yeah, Stephanie's got me. She's like, overload, overload. Yeah. Like, even Randy came over and was like, just like hugged me to get me to like be still. It was like, everything's okay. It's fine. And I'm just there going like, no, it's not. We're all going to die. And he's like, we're fine. And I was like, that's just what somebody would say. It's <laughs> just what the robots want you to think. Um, ooh, Michelle says, I was headed in to take a nap when your notification popped up. Oh, oh no. Michelle, you should get your sleep. <laughs> but yeah, so I think what I'm going to do with these is we can set like little stones or like wire wrap stuff around on it. But those are really cute. So we're just going to make a big pile. Hey, Randy, mm -hmm. could you help me with something? Could you bring me one of those plastic shoe boxes? Boop -a -doo, doo, 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 doo. Ooh. Oh, those are so pretty. We got some little mermaid charms. <sighs> Stephanie says I was smart for once and I already took a nap after I got off work. <laughs> Thank you, honey. That's perfect. So we go in the bin of holding. Yeah, that's not a good spot for that. But my workspace is in complete and total chaos. So I was going to turn these guys into earrings. Whoops. But look at those little mermaid charms, you guys. It's, I'm fine, I'm fine. Everything's fine. It is, though. Things are actually really good. I just got super excited all at once and started losing my mind. But it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I need that. Ooh, the little Baba Yaga chicken feet came in. Hey, Anne's Arts and Crafts. Oh my god, I love that. Just finished cooking dinner just in time, so I'm ready for the show. Right on. Look at these little chicken feet. <laughs> I don't know, I just wanted to try them out. <laughs> you and me both, Penny. Like, I get, like, super excited. But, whew. Goodness. Okay, everything's good. I'm going to chill out. And actually, I'm here and I'm like, you know what? I could really use another cup of coffee. And it's like, no, no, no. You know what we don't do when we're literally bouncing off of our wall? Uh, off of our walls is not consume more caffeine. Woo. Okay, so I'm opening the stuff off screen because I don't know what has our address on it and what doesn't. And while we've been to before, it's also like, meh. Ooh. Oh, these are cool. Okay. So I'm actually really glad. Um, I was hoping that they could penny, but I'm not going to fool about with it just yet. But look at these little... Seed of life flowers. 
And again, I thought that this would be really cool for fractal wrapping. Like if I can put the wire through. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what we can do. But that's a whole bunch of those. <laughs> Michelle says decaf. And then here's another package. I'm just trying to get my workspace cleared up real quick because why I'm doing the... Oh, and I ordered a bunch of rings because I had an idea. Now, these are stainless steel rings. But my idea is... Because I'm actually test wearing this one for like... Oh, Pro, that's a really good idea. It says use it as a stamp for poly clay. <laughs> But I really think this is a very cute ring. And so I got it in a size 12. And what I'd like to do is cut like here and here. And file it or sand it or something to get it to be like smoothed. Um, and then incorporate this into a wire wrapped ring that can be a, like adjusted because I'll have done the wire band myself. Now with this one... I've been wearing it for a few days, and other than some swelling, because, like, we've been so busy, we ate Brahms, like, two nights in a row, and I am swollen like a hot dog. Like, it's terrible. Um, but it has not irritated my skin at all, except for this gap in the adjustable rings. Every time that, like, it'll start to shift around, and it's hard for me to make it happen, ah, that happens. Like, my little, my little hand webs get caught <laughs> and I don't even have particularly like I never really felt like I had much webbing between my fingers uh, but whatever's there it catches it so with this one I am going to cut off adjustable part and file or something and then do the wire wrapped band around and we will definitely be doing tutorials on that but I'm in one just some rings and I really really like that that's and again other than that gap there it's very comfy but I thought that one would be mega cute so I'm gonna open the thingy do 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 oh yeah I love anything with moons on it I'm absolutely into First you take the moon, and you take the moon, and you take the moon, and you take the moon. Aw, oh, come on, just let me in, bag. They use so much packaging on this stuff. And I mean, I guess if I were shipping something to the other side of the world, I would too. <laughs> okay. So let's see now what is in this little package. We're gonna whoop. Ooh, oh, those are so cool and beefy. Mega beefy. Randy might want to try wearing one of these. <gasps> really, Sabaya? <laughs> Eden says, I need to sit down and use all the supplies that I bought. Same. Now, these, these are pretty big. They're, they're going to be pretty big on me. They're a size 13. But I absolutely, oh, that's a nice heavy ring too. It's a little hollowed out on the back, which I actually think is pretty cool. But that would be... Hey Randy, my love. Yeah? Do you want to come try on one of these rings? See if it turns your finger green? Because something else that I was thinking that I could do with these... Well, if the metal's cheap enough, it'll, it'll turn anybody green. You need a bigger than a 13? Yeah, it's all right. Here, I'll take that from you. Mm. <laughs> no, he took it. It's his now. <laughs> right on. Yeah, Randy wears around a 15 or 16, I think. So he got those. He has solid hands. It's nice. But yeah, I really love... Because again, I was thinking, it's like, if I can just taper it down, basically where that inner line is... And then make my own wire band or something. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, goodness, Penny. That sounds a bit crazy. Do -do 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 -do. What's this? Ooh. 
That'll be really nice. These rose charms are so cute. Perfect as little dangles. Okay. Into the bin with ye. What else did we have? Ooh, all sorts of stuff. Okay, what are these? Oh, they're little moons with faces. And I'm really pleased with these, too. Um, because they are... It's got the pattern on both sides. And I really like that because I like when I make earrings for them to be able to be mirrored. Um, and with the mermaid ones that we got, that's not really an option. And, of course, I get them in silver and the antique brass tone. <laughs> and then some mega cute little key charms. Those will make some cute earrings. And then there those are in silver as well. Oh, goodness. I'm so sorry. Hey, guys. I pressed the button. I'm so sorry. Let me flip that around. There we go. And I'm going to turn my volume off. There we go. Okay. <laughs> ah, hey, Stephanie. From my nose. I hope I didn't have any taters up there. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you guys. Well, it's, we were expecting a call all day. Like, we have been on call all day waiting to hear back from a plumber. And we heard back at, mm, like, a little before 4.30. Uh, and the guy was like, hey, I'm in Carl Junction. Are you ready for your consultation? And we're like, uh, yeah. <laughs> because we've like, I mean, he could have showed up at any time. He could have been like, seven in the morning. You ready? He would be like, yes. We want hot water so badly. Um, but then just everything was like straight cray cray. And then I couldn't find my cat. And so I had to shake the treats a whole bunch. But we found her. It's fine. And we may end up having to buy a horse trough or just a really jumongous tote uh, to put the water heater in. Because the plumber was like, well, if your basement keeps flooding, just put your water heater inside like a kiddie pool or something <laughs> to keep the water out. And we we're like, dude, that's brilliant. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do now. Um, <laughs> so, ooh, and some wee bitty little feather charms. And then, ooh, some cute little butterflies. Oh, I love that. Such little cuties. N no, <laughs> buying a horse. Yeah, that'd be, honestly, I'm down. Like, that, that's a whole new set of problems. I don't have anywhere to put a horse. Not legally, anyways. Like, I'd put it in the side yard, but it wouldn't be a very happy horse. Maybe if we just got a little one. Nah, it'll be fine. Look at these moons. Now, again, you can see this has, like, a right side and a wrong side, which kind of bums me out, but that's okay. Oh, no. Evans. Yeah, fortunately, where we are, all the crappy crap about our house is to, uh, grandfathered in. So if we want to do anything to the house inside the walls, then we have to bring everything up to code. Um, so, yeah, that's why we're not fixing anything right this minute and then we got some more of these sewing machine charms and got those in silver and brass toned like honestly just about all this stuff is for beefing up our earring selection so we've got some big scissors little scissors i want a goat i can put in a onesie well technically i guess you could put any goat in a onesie once some bigger feathers. I think those will look really cute layered with the small ones. Ooh! Penny says I have a four foot wide, two foot tall uh, found livestock water tub as our bathtub. It looks so cool with the corrugated steel. Not expensive either. That's amazing. Nice. <laughs> like, that's actually really clever. Okay. And we only have four more packages. And then we can get to crafting. But yeah, I really love using the AliExpress, like, Cheapo charms for, um, electroforming over. Now well, that's cool. Now these guys, we have a 
hand shower one. Nice, honey. And having a big, like, big tub like that would be really nice. So, like, this one, again, since I don't really trust the metal type, I like using it as a base to electroform over. A 10-foot round steel water trough. Nice, bro. <laughs> That's the way to go about it. Okay, so I'm going to set those off to the side. And I tried to not pay more than 2 or $3 per any individual item. So some of the stuff went a little higher. I don't know without looking at my purchase records um you know which ones were um but i just thought that this would look really cool um maybe incorporated into a polymer clay piece or even just used as is sealed uh with some like glossy mod podge on like a chainmail necklace i thought that would be really nice what i do with the other one okay oh goodness Sabaya. Ooh, what are these? What's that? What's this? Oh, it's a tree. I don't remember getting this. <laughs> hey, Christina, how's it going? Ooh, look at that tree, you guys. I love how it's knots all around. That is so cool. So yeah, sometimes just having a quick focal point that you can put up on like a bead strung necklace or, you know, uh, we may be able to take these and um, curve them and stuff. Yes, so I'd be coating these in copper. That way it's at least not nickel that's touching people's skin. Um, ah, hey, Verdina. Uh, good luck, Eddins. Okay, I'm starting to be a little calmer. This is good. And honestly, just about anything that I've ever been interested in getting from Hobby Lobby, um, as far as their different charms and things goes, I've been able to find in bulk on AliExpress, so. Oop, there's those ones. I'm gonna save the big old package for last. Ooh, ooh, okay. So with these ones, I'm just gonna let you guys know, I had found these on Amazon as like hair beads and they were like $3 a piece. And then I found it on AliExpress where it was $3 for the entire necklace set. Which I you know, thought that was a pretty good deal. And I got two of them. And I was thinking about making tube earrings out of, like, where I do, like, a bead on either end of this. But since I have, oh, no, no, I got more than two, didn't I? Ha ha! Um, like, we could have earrings of each of the different rooms. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that, I'm going to say. And I don't mind using cheap metal charms for earrings so long as the ear hook is a good quality. So, because most of the time, like if you're wearing an earring, it, the bead isn't touching, it's just kind of floating, hanging off of your ear, if that makes sense. But yeah, I just, I love the, like we've got the little triquetra in each of the rooms. Because I've gotten some of these off of Amazon for putting in my dreads when I wear them. And they're very cute. But man, they're proud of their prices. <laughs> or they price it like they're proud, rather. I'm going to take my shoes off. I've been rocking Crocs with socks for like days. That's my new favorite shoe to wear, I suppose.
Now this is interesting. These are wrapped in some air stuff. <laughs> Pinky says, I've been leery of AliExpress, but all this stuff looks cool. Now, I'm just going to let you know, this is not to be like, I'm an experienced AliExpress buyer, but you do have to be very discerning about what you're buying off of AliExpress because some sellers, what's pictured isn't what you get. And sometimes what's, pic what's pictured is what you get, but the picture is very misleading. Um, and so I actually thought it'd be really interesting to get to share uh, this process with you guys of, you know, the different items that I've purchased. That way I can show you. Because, like, these charms, I got in a mixed pack off of AliExpress. And a lot of the same Etsy charms, uh, Amazon charms, things like that, are are just from the same AliExpress manufacturers. So, um... It's, it's it, it can be a little bit of a crapshoot. Um, so these guys here, I had actually gotten because I want to pop the crystal out of the cheap little metal component part and just wrap the crystal. <laughs> like I just wanted the rose quartz. So um, that's just me though. We'll have to figure out. So like I could even like take this off and just use this and add other charms and stuff in electroform over it. So I don't much care for a lot of the different AliExpress items to use exactly as is. Um, but they, they make great kind of something that you can Frankenstein off of or, you know, add other things to. Ah, Pinky says, I love Panda Hall, but the shipping is killer. It is. And that's, Randy calls it the slow boat, uh, but it's, a lot of the stuff from AliExpress does take, like, we always budget about three months for it to get here. Um, and so order it because you want it, not because you need it right now. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, Pro, it really does help to go in with a, a really low bar of expectation. Um, but honestly, I'm very impressed by the quality on these rings. Like, because again, like it hasn't been turning me green or anything. And I'm really interested to see how it, um, you know, how it wears over, you know, wearing it for a couple of weeks. But they said it was stainless steel, and I'm like, yeah, stainless steel doesn't mean hypoallergenic, though, and all sorts of stuff. So, whoop. <laughs> yeah, I've never bought anything off of Wish, um, just because most everything off of Wish is non-bulk of what I could just get on AliExpress. Um... <laughs> yeah, same. Well, I like socks. They're they're a nice little buffer between me and the rest of the world. A little prophylactic for your feet. Very nice. Okay, so that was the last of the packages. Let's get up a little handful of stuff and dump it in the bin like an animal. Only downside to wearing socks is I can't pick stuff up with my toes. At least not without removing the socks first. Maybe toe socks would help with that. I don't know. Do 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 Okay. Like my whole space, y'all, is just absolutely bonkers. It's wrecked. And I had been maintaining a relatively reasonable workstation for a little bit. Here's the thing I was working on. <laughs> hey Hawk, how's it going? Whoop. Oh, right on, huh? There we go. So I've been working on making these little chainmail bezels for drilled crystals. 
And I realize it's blurry, but I don't think there's a whole lot I can do about that. There's probably cheese all over my lens again. And... <laughs> Randy. <laughs> Yeah, that looks like it's going to be a, a good length. Maybe one too long. We'll see. And I'll need to count and see how many this is. Oops. That's just all bent weird now. Oh my gosh. Well, I had done the closure so well that I couldn't see what was happening. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Toes. Okay, so we've got, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 units long. Eee! All right on, is that at the Orchard Witching Gnome? Oh, that's brilliant, Huck. Okay. Very cool. Okay, let's set that down for just a sec. And I'm going to take this ring and push it up. Go find the closure. Open it. This is so finicky trying to get. And these are 20 gauge, 1 8 inch stainless steel rings. Whoops. Come on now. Whoops. We can do this. First you take the moon, then you take the moon. There we go. Maybe. And I'm just trying to get this project... Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Let's see how many more times I can... Whoops this. Okay. And now we have to turn it inside out. Hey, dancing tree. How's it going? E. Okay, turned inside out. And now... Let's put it on our crystal. There we go. And how many? I forget how many that was. I think it was 13. I'm going to go with 13. And what we'll do is we'll just thread a wire through it and whew, we'll do some of that. Okay, I've got to get some of this stuff off my work surface before I have a catastrophe. Woo! There we go. And now I should be able to see the comments. <laughs> there we go. Oof. Okay. Ah, uh, thank you, Missy. I'm gonna zoom back out just so you can... So, so, and it, pro, that's not even the smallest rings I've ever woven this weave out of. Like, and that's not even the smallest rings I used uh, when I was first learning. Like, I learned on a 22 gauge something or another, just ridiculous tiny. But I was very passionate about the project, and sometimes that's what it takes to get me through, is to just embrace the insanity and go.
I'm just getting some crystals put into not all over the table <laughs> for like two seconds. Oh, great. Okay. And then I'm going to scooch these off to the side. Right on, Kelly. <laughs> you got this, pro. So with these, I was thinking, hey, Randy, I have a question. Should I make more of the bracelets that were a combination of all of these charms? I just realized you probably can't hear me. Hey, honey. Should I make a bracelet that's a combination of all of these charms? Because I already have two from yesterday. Or should I make them into earrings? Because mm. some of them I have enough. Maybe one more bracelet and then use the rest for earrings. Okay. Hey, cat keys. That's a <laughs> bottle of water. <laughs> you, can't just, you can't just feed a guy a sponge, Randy. <laughs> I shut I'm ready for a kiss and he just goes on my mouth with a uh, the the butt end of a water bottle <laughs> hey Dana how's it going <sighs> oh um Beverly says hi Yvonne being in Hawaii do you ever mingle with Christy Frazen um I'm not in Hawaii I'm in Missouri <laughs> Was destroyed, says Kay. Right? <laughs> You're good, but you know. Okay, and now I am gonna. Gosh, I need to just like. One thing at a time. Hey, Wandy. I would like more coffee. Would you make some? Would you make more coffee for me to drink? Do you really need that? I need for nothing. Do I want it? Yes. <laughs> How about you drink a water? You drink a water. I am. Would you like to finish your water from two days ago? No. <laughs> Yeah, drink. that'll be perfect. No. <laughs> it's, I'll drink that water if you just, like, steep it through some coffee beans first. No. <laughs> Thank you, honey. <laughs> hey, Rachel. I really hope that was an ice cube I just ate. Oh, well. Okay. I'm going to scooch some of these smaller. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> it was like the bottom of the iced coffee that I'd made this morning and been keeping in that thermos all day. And so I think it was just a bunch of coffee grounds. <laughs> Gritty kitty coffee. Mmm, bean juice is funny. <laughs> coffee is water. See, they're with me on this one. Y'all got my back. I appreciate you. But Randy is wise in the ways of caring for Avon. <laughs> Kay says, are you on TikTok yet? We do have a TikTok. I do not use it because TikTok makes me very, very overwhelmed. Um, it's like basically just a bucket of loud noises. Okay, sorry, Randy was just showing me something real quick. Um, coffee is good for your heart. Antioxidants. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Can anyone tell me if I'm in the Yvonne Williams craft show? Hey, Cece. Yep, you are in here. Grounds and all. Yep. No, it's in... 
uh, for years, I, and I still don't really use Pinterest because it will suck me in and eight hours later I've accomplished nothing. Um, and uh, I already have a devastatingly distractible attention span and I feel like TikTok just absolutely brings out the worst of that in me. So I rely on those very near and dear to me to just curate memes and then show them to me uh, that way. <laughs> like, I don't have to take the time to uh, find the funny stuff myself. Like, I've got one friend who, uh, she is an absolute queen at finding the best cat and goat videos. But part of the rule is, like, we can only look at them together. That way, it's not just me going... <laughs> <laughs> and like like sorting through my nose while looking at memes like we get to have like that friendship connection and now like my camera's right here and it's really freaking me out it's like right in my face field okay there we go so I know it's a little bit more zoomed out now but I don't feel like I'm having to sit funny to keep from hitting myself on it okay so now I'm opening up some of these it's 20 gauge 1 8 inch stainless steel and what I'm doing is I'm going to be putting two rings into each little loop on the ends of these charms now we had gotten these charms in about two or three days ago and the very first thing I do before I even put the charms away like that's why I have them in a shoebox bin right now in their bag still is before I even put them into my bead trays to be utilized I lay them out on cardboard and spray them with an acrylic sealer like how you would seal like a charcoal uh, piece of art or something with I do like you know two or three coats um, you I you can use the Mod Podge ultra spray but I find oops, that the acrylic sealer is just a little finer misted um, and it dries pretty quick, so that's good. <laughs> Vaughn losing her mind. I am a little bit. It's okay. It's, I've been doing a lot. Like, everything's okay. Oh, and I'm about uh, 300 emails behind, which I'm trying really hard to not think about. So, um, if you've sent me an email... I am trying my best to get to you. Um, it's just challenging because uh, I'm not quite able right now to reply to them faster than what they're coming in. So, whew. Ooh, uh, Perrine, I don't, Perrine, I don't know how, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, but says, Vaughn, is there a specific brand of acrylic sealer for copper that you might use? Um, Krylon, though with copper, honestly, I really prefer the Mod Par, Mod Par, oh boy, Mod Podge Hard Coat, the outdoor stuff, because it holds up really well to moisture. But yeah, I'm just adding two little rings onto each loop. And as much as I typically love using gemstones and textures and different things like that, um, the, the, the next three bracelets that I'm making are kind of a study in just contrasting metal oopsie, textures so I'm not going to be putting any gemstones on them I'm just using rings and the charms themselves we have an individual wanting to know if you hadn't just slid back into your no, I have not just slid back into my old habits, Maddie. <laughs> you and Randy are on to me, though. <laughs> hey, Iris, how's it going? That, that, is, that is a lot, Dana. 
and I'm like torn between um, do I go to the oldest emails and reply to those first or do I reply to the newest emails first or do I just like I don't I just don't know <laughs> there we go okay so now I have this stack of organizers here and these are uh, stainless steel square cut rings so the wire that the rings are made from has a little bit like it, it's a rounded square wire if that makes sense like let me show you so it still has a little bit of that flash to it but it's not as crispy as the anodized aluminum square wire rings that we've gotten from the ring lord lately but man stainless steel is beautiful but pretty hard on your hands. Like this is 18 gauge 3 sixteenths in the square rings, um, or in the square wire rings. And that's about the thickest that I can work with, with stainless steel uh, for weaving. Like I could use a little bit thicker for just like joining pieces together or something, but um, this stuff will take it out of your hands pretty quick. Um, Diane asks, why do you spray your charms? Um, because whenever, whatever it is that they're plated in, if folks have acidic skin, it can eat through that plating pretty rapidly and start leaving like a sometimes green, sometimes purple, sometimes blackish residue on your skin. And so whenever it's inexpensive charms like this, now granted, we sell these bracelets for like eight to ten bucks. So, you know, and we always let folks know that if it starts to turn them, uh, you know, funny colors, we do free repairs on all of our work, so they can always send it to us and we'll recode it. Um, but it's just a little layer of protection to make it last just a little bit longer. But it's, the venues that we sell at, typically, like, if, I don't know, you know, maybe it's me getting in my own way. But it's, I don't think I could sell this design in sterling silver. Uh, at least certainly not for 8 to $10. Um, so it's just having a nice way, a nice alternative to, you know, I don't want it to just be costume jewelry. But keeps me from having to, you know, hand make, hand make every single little item. It's varying degrees of handmade. Uh, Sharon says, can you use clear nail polish? You can. Uh, I have had more problems with the clear nail polish flaking sooner than the acrylic sealer. Um, and it can depend on the texture. You know, something like this has a little bit of tooth to it. You can kind of see it's got a little bit of texture there. That would hold on to the nail polish a little bit better. Um, um, it might just be you. My phone has not registered and it's still going on my tablet. Virginia says, can't wear anything cheap at all. Right on. Yeah. Sterling silver is pretty expensive, but I do have hopes of one day working in sterling silver. But I really love the way that that looks with the little square ring in between. Just kind of a fun fun bit of jewelry. And now I'm using 18 gauge aluminum in 1 8 inch. I'm going to open that up and I'm putting on a lobster claw clasp and then hooking through that end there. Uh, 
Uh, I think the can that I'm working on currently is just like Krylon brand or maybe Liquitex. Um, I go to like the art section at um, Michael's where they have like their paints and different uh, gel mediums and stuff and find charcoal sealer or you know anything like that and it seems to hold up pretty well. Hey Kim, how's it going? Ooh, Anne says, do you ever work with wood of any kind? Uh, we use a whole lot of birch and maple and walnut in our laser cutting, um, but uh, I've been I've had the the joy of working with sandalwood charms just a few times, but I haven't been able to get my hands on any more of them. They were actually part of like a a trade I had done with another vendor who was like, I'll give you this cat litter tote, like this cat litter bin full of beads from the 70s if you make this necklace for me. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, it was pretty cool. <laughs> oh, I was going to double click it for a heart. No, this is a super, like yeah, mm -hmm. super cute picture. And just like that, boom, fast little bracelet. And so I'm just going to make a couple more. Again, just trying to get... And this is what Randy and I would consider our, our filler inventory. It's the stuff that gives us a much lower price point than what we could accomplish with chainmail wire wrapping or strung gemstones. So it's like I like to have a nice spectrum that if somebody's got a $10 bill in their pocket and they're at one of the vending events that we're at, I would love to trade jewelry for that money <laughs> so if i can have something that's at that lower price point then excellent oh my goodness is that photoshopped that can't be real you go better than me yeah Oof. <laughs> so randy just keeps bringing over memes um are you in live chat? No, I'm not. Oh, no. Okay, now I am. <laughs> Thank you, Regina. Um, Erica says, for sealers, do you use matte or glossy? Um, typically, <clears throat> I think glossy is what I usually use. Uh, just because shiny. <laughs> <laughs> right on, Kelly. Elijah says, oh my god, I've already made Rio Pro this year, which is mostly sterling and 14k, but it's insane. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Uh, Droma says, how about square wire rings in lieu of square rings? Ah, I like that, Droma. It's just hard to let go of the vocabulary Randy and I've been using since forever. <laughs> uh, Virginia says, where do you get all your pieces? Uh, like those. All these charms we got currently... All the charms on the table I got from AliExpress. Right on, Kelly. Well, it's also they're starting to open back up, uh, having different vending events and stuff. You go find some more, Kelly. Oh, bye, Mary Hart. Have a great dinner. Ooh. Do you have any links to the site for any of them? I don't, kid. Hmm. How long did the delivery take? Um. Some of these were only ordered a month ago, and they've started showing up. But we, like, we dropped some mad cash on Alley. Like, uh. But it's we're hoping that it'll get here in time for us to use it for our Dragon Con prep. But we usually order trying to give ourselves at least a three month window for like when we're like, okay, we're going to desperately need this. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
I'm just opening. I'm not even counting anymore. It's nice to just sit and craft and hang out and watch the birds at the feeder. Like, this is the most peaceful my day has been all day. There's one, one ring. And I do the two rings, two smaller as opposed to one of the thicker, just because um, AliExpress. Uh, Virginia. Ooh wee. But I do the two thinner charm, or thinner wire. Burnt boast. Um, I do the, the two thinner rings on each end of the charm just because I think it looks nice like I really like the way the two rings stacked next to each other looks ah Penny says Allie doesn't take as long as the old days most of the stores have the option of US warehouse orders now right on it's good to know Ooh, Kit says, I find that two rings makes the bracelet twist less, too. You know, I think you might be onto something. Um, MM asks, do you spray the sealant on the pieces prior to making the actual jewelry? I do. In that way, there's not any, like, hidden spots from where the rings lay. It's just, it's a little tedious because you want to lay them all out so that, you know, they're, all those surface areas exposed. Like, you don't want one laying over the other. You want them like that. And then you have to go through and flip them all. But if you just do it as, like, a big batch then um you don't have to worry and i'll do a coat you know wait probably anywhere from 20 minutes to a couple of hours if i forget to set a timer um and then i'll do all the coats on one side you really want to make sure that you're spraying um we actually have a video on this on how to seal cheap bezel trays same strategy as what i use on all all the charms um but you want to do a really light coat because if you do it too heavily it's going to possibly leak to the front and then dry into like a little overflow puddle uh, bye missy have a great rest of your night oh no anna yeah oh no There we go. Got two more charms and then we can finish up. to say I am so excited at the prospect of having hot water by Monday like <laughs> I am almost giddy mm, MM asks do you also spray the jump rings and clasps the jump rings and clasps are where I invest most of uh, like I make sure that we get really good quality so these are stainless steel from the ring lord and they do not have nickel in them, so they don't need sprayed. Um, the clasps that we use, these are silver clasps. Um, and then I have some that are uh, surgical steel. It's a 304 surgical steel. So it's I get super cheap charms, but then pay more for the clasps and findings. Um, just because, like, the charm just has to sit there and look pretty. Whereas the clasp 
especially if it has a hinge or lever mechanism, I am always willing to pay, you know, probably like if there's like the cheapest clasps that are like a dollar for a 10 pack, I would very much rather pay two or three dollars for a 10 pack, but know that all of the stinking levers are going to work and know that they're not going to, you know, turn and they're not going to irritate folks. So it's kind of like buying name brand. Sometimes you know that it's like, oh, I can just get store brand at this thing. But on some of the stuff, it's like, nope, I only get name brand. Like mostly French fried onions, for, like on top of green bean casserole. Like everything else, like the beans, I don't mind if those are brand, but I get the, the name brand <laughs> French fried onions. Because the other ones always have like a glob of grease in them. Yes, www.theringlord.com. And if you check out any of our more recent videos, like anything that I've posted in the past year, uh, it should have up to date links in the video description to where we purchased everything in that tutorial. And that's tools and materials, everything. But yeah, for purchasing findings like clasps and ear hooks and stuff, I really like Fire Mountain Gems and the Ring Lord because they're very transparent about um, what the materials are actually made of. So some places will say, oh yeah, this is sterling silver. It's just silver plated. Like it's been plated in sterling silver, but it's so thin that it, you know, it still wears through over time. So not always the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There we go. There's another little bracelet. Okay. <laughs> Remember not to snort the green beans. I love that's why I make green bean casserole, Anna. <laughs> Ooh, what? Wow. Okay. Oh, that's amazing, Witch and Gnome. I'm so excited for y'all. Hopefully you'll find the perfect place. Okay. So now I haven't finished these two bracelets yet because I still need to do the extender chain off the end. I just wanted to get kind of up to the same stage on all of them. Hey, my love. What you doing? Oh. You wanna see a movie? Yeah, maybe. Oh, Layla! <laughs> That's so cute. That's a big dog. Is that like an Irish wolfhound or something? <laughs> it's not over. <laughs> oh, sweet doggy. Ooh, right on, Kit. So neat. <laughs> she looks like she needs about as much help as I did when I was being attacked by the neighbor's puppies in a uh, cuddle fest. 
um tanya i spray them with it's it regardless of brand it'll just say acrylic sealer um so like i think the can that i'm using up now is krylon brand but i think i've also used possibly liquitex brand um as i like the stuff that is intended for artwork for sealing like charcoals and stuff because it doesn't yellow it's supposed to be like or it, it claims that it doesn't yellow um i haven't noticed it so And also the acrylic sealer, like nothing is permanent always, um, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> and you can always let your customers know that if that's something that's important to them, that they can, you know, any of their, as much as I hate the term, any of their costume jewelry, like anything that's not a precious metal, or I will say parawire, because I've never had any problems with parawire uh their enameled stuff tarnishing or anything like that like that's the one thing that um like i can buy straight off straight from the website and i don't have to do anything to it i just get right to it uh as far as enameled stuff goes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, right on jack's brand says penny J-A-X-X. -X. I'll have to check them out. says oh man i'm itching to get the final stuff to set up for electroforming nature is coming out like crazy <laughs> yeah i i think i need to like i don't know i'm kind of nervous i was gonna upgrade our electroforming setup to we helped a friend's mom move um this past october and uh as part of the deal they were like we've got these extra like well there wasn't any deal it was just they we were allowed to scavenge uh with anything that was left behind and she was like uh had these three fish tanks and so i was like we could totally do a fish tank setup um and like do big batch electroforming but i'm kind of nervous because i don't have a lid for it and i don't want like it filling up with uh moths and stuff yes cc i have used the mod podge acrylic sealer quite a bit um, it's just, as far as the sprays go, um, I found that the aerosol acrylic sprays applied a little bit more of a consistent fine-grained coat than what the Mod Podge Ultra does. Um, but if you're just painting it on, which is an option as well, I really like Mod Podge. Ooh, Nicole, that's a really good question. Nicole says, do you all set a production goal such as $300 worth of products per day? Um, we don't do it based on a monetary value currently. Um, we're doing it based on, like I can actually show y'all. Whoopsie. Oh my God, there's stuff everywhere. Why, why am I like this? Hide that in there. Ooh, I'm really excited to try, actually I need to put one of these in my ear right this second because um i'm trying out a new brand of 304 surgical steel lever back ear hooks and so it's the only thing with these is that's a really thick wire but we'll see okay i'm gonna put this in my ear real quick 
First you take the moon, then you take the moon. You know it looks thick, but it actually sits real comfy. Real comfy. Okay, so we keep track of our production. Um, we have not been doing very good on production this week. It's been a very busy mess of a week. Um, but we shoot for a quantity. So, like, we need, you know, a certain number of necklaces. And this is a new week, even though it's Friday. I'm still, mentally, I'm still in Monday, you guys. Like, I'm a disaster. Um, but I haven't transferred over from last month's cap, uh, planner pages what the numbers were for each week i'm just tracking production currently but it's you know stuff that i know that we need to make 67 bracelets per week um so is shooting at like the high goal um and it's because i'm trying to make my brain do words in the right order give me a sec uh, we know how many of certain things that we need to fill our display. So we uh, know exactly how many rings we can have displayed at once between our four ring displays. Um, and so to meet our production goals, we're trying to go into Dragon Con, since it's such a large event, with six times what we can have displayed at any given time. Um, and that way we have loads of back stock that we can restock our displays with. Um, and some of the stuff like, like our rings and ear cuffs sell at a much faster rate than our necklaces. Uh, loud noises warning, the FedEx guy is bringing a package. And our dogs are probably going to bark, so. Ooh, right on. Hawk says, I meant to tell you after watching you set up, I went out and invested in a really good tackle box for my jewelry. I love it. It holds six trays and has six outside pockets and a pocket on the inside lid. All oh, right on, Hawk. There's the doggies. Did you find out if the thumbs upon... Off and on again helped. Oh, I have no idea, Erica. <laughs> hey, Beth, how's it going? It was fun, though, wasn't it, Erica? <laughs> so, yeah, we are just... And honestly, like, our minimum is three times what our booth can hold to display. But I really don't think that's going to get us very far based off of... Um, now granted, at our last vending event, Anime St. Louis, we, on the dealer's room side, I didn't get a chance to look through Artist Alley, but on the dealer's room area, we were just about the only person selling jewelry in the style that we have. Whereas at Dragon Con, I know for a fact there's lots of other wire wrappers, chain mailers, polymer clay artists, like, um, so there's lots of other options, but at Anime St. Louis... We sold out of all of, almost all of our back stock by halfway through the day on Sunday. And they only had 7,000 people in attendance. Whereas Dragon Con, I've heard anywhere from 60,000 to 200,000. Like, they get massive amounts of people. And we're on the first floor for the first time. So we have, so the numbers that we have from years past may or may not, you know, be we don't know late uh so i have no idea what to expect so we're like bracing ourselves for hopefully the best sales weekend of our entire career um but we shall see <clears throat> hey marley do you have any advice for someone wanting to start a jewelry youtube channel dive right into it what up babe uh-huh so James reminds me that you don't want to move balloons into the trailer on Saturday because it gets hot in there and you'll have a bunch of popped balloons. That's a really good point. So when do you want to load the trailer with the balloons? Um, probably Sunday morning. Uh, we were going to stop by the store and get those contractor trash bags that can fit like a whole bunch. And that way... Are you doing that tonight or tomorrow? No, that's tomorrow. That's a tomorrow problem. Um, but that way... 
because we're not going to assemble the arch here. We're just going to make all the balloon clusters and then piece them together at the venue. So, I mean, truly, if they want to do it Saturday night, we can load the trailer then. Okay. So, but I also don't know. Uh, we may be up until 2 or 3 in the morning inflating balloons. I don't know how long 700 balloons is going to take us. So, again, that's a tomorrow Vaughn problem. So, my poor fingers, they're going to just be bleeding. <laughs> Gigi says, go get them coins, Vaughn. I hope Dragon Con is a super success. Us too. We, I just hope we survive it. Because, quite frankly, if we sell out of everything... Saturday afternoon we'll just sit in our booth and hang out with people <laughs> so it's worst case scenario is not that bad but it's I'd hate to miss the opportunity to make sick amounts of cash um hey Whatever it is, we bought it. okay <laughs> ah Witch and Gnome says, the lady today said that they have a gemstone tree vendor, and if possible, to focus on our other pieces, which was our bigger seller this last event. Right on. I don't know. I'm I'm an ornery old hag in my heart, um, because it's like, um... I wonder if it felt like 40 pounds. Is it a 40-pound bag of cat litter? Yep. Nice. Um, you okay? But it's, I don't want somebody telling me what I should or should not uh, carry in my booth. Because it's like, I would never. And I've had people lose their minds um, at venues where it's like, you know, they feel like they should be the only one who's allowed to sell jewelry, at least is their attitude. Um, and we had one lady have a full-on meltdown, like, at yelling in the face of the event coordinator. Do it, babe? I said, I'm a medical you are, <laughs> You're not, though, that's right. Um, the, it's like they didn't think that we should be allowed to be there because we sell jewelry also. And it's like, eh. Just because, you know, one person does wire-wrapped, you know, trees of life doesn't mean that the booth next to them can't also have some wire-wrapped trees of life because, you know, it's, it's, it's not just what you have in your booth. It's how your booth is displayed how you are as a salesperson because there's some people that like i vibe really well with there's some people who think i'm abrasive and too much and that's okay i'm not everybody's cup of tea but it's like uh it's sorry to me that that was a, a red flag that popped up for me that it's and i this is me projecting my own experience this could be completely not a not an issue for y'all um but it's like i get bristly whenever people try to tell me what i should carry in my booth um. Mm, MM says, do you have any videos giving out leads about vending events? Um, I'm not certain what you mean by leads, uh, but the advice that I always, always give folks is to have a very realistic idea of how far you're willing to travel. Um, because some folks only want to do local shows because they're like, I, if, you know, I don't want to pay for a hotel in addition to booth fee, in addition to, you know, whatever gas or food expenses. Um, and so, you know, if you're limited to a one hour drive or if you're like Randy and he's perfectly willing to drive 17 hours in a day uh, to go to a venue. So um, and then just look at like Google Maps of, you know, cities that are within a certain travel distance radius of you and then like let's say maybe you want to uh vend at fairy festivals or renaissance festivals or high-end art shows um that are like curated gallery events like black tie type stuff um and so i would just search for uh you know venues and like like let's say uh you know high-end art show in St. Louis and start finding, you know, events. And I would usually have a year calendar and I would write in potential events for different weekends to be able to see if, you know, yeah, there might be two really great events on the same weekend, but one is only four hours away, whereas the other one is eight hours away. And I would just start compiling that information 
And so, because again, something that may have been a terrible vending event for me might be the best show you've done all year. Like, um, so my own experience isn't always representative of what's going to be, you know, true for everyone, if that makes sense. That's a really good point. Perian said, I think it's up to the coordinator in charge of the fair to distribute jewelry vendors without or with throughout the fair instead of lumping them in one area that is always really nice when they try to space us out we've done craft shows before where the uh coordinator i don't think had ever vended so they were like yeah we'll just put all of the jewelry people in one section all of the soap people in one section all of the you know uh knitted and fiber art people in another and like all of the vendors were like what is happening <laughs> So, um, because if you do too much of this, you know, same vendor type back to back, you know, uh, the customers kind of just like glaze over and just wander through. They aren't like it disrupts the, uh, shopping flow of them kind of like a bee visiting flower to flower. Oh, wow. Right on what you know. That's awesome. Wow. Hawk said, I've had that happen. I had a lady one time ask me if I would take my earrings down because that's all she sold and I refused. Yeah, it's, I don't know, that's... <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I wouldn't have taken mine down either. It's, here, here in town locally, King Cash Saver does not go over to Walmart and be like, hey, can you stop selling apples? We sell apples. <laughs> like, mm -mm. that's not how this works. Mm. No, it's, I always try to remain as professional and polite as possible, even whenever people are being belligerent or, uh, it's, I don't know. But it's, I also try really hard to have like a gratitude and abundance attitude because it's it really, we've done very well right alongside other vendors who are also doing very well. Both of us selling on paper, the literal same thing. We both do wire wrapped jewelry and chain mail. And there's enough people out there who are going to like my style and who's going to like this style that we're both going to do well. But what helps sales more than unique items, more than being the only person who has earrings up for sale is having a pleasant demeanor and a happy interaction. Like if you're putting out good vibes, people are going to enjoy shopping with you because if all they wanted was jewelry, they could just get on the internet and just buy jewelry from any random. But a lot of it is having that interaction of connecting with the artist, connecting with the piece, like, you know, so it's, it, it's not about the material thing that's in the booth. That's a part of it, but it's not all of it. And I think um, some artisans can lose sight of that, possibly. There we go. Oh, that'd be cool. Tammy says, you guys need a travel trailer to haul your products and can sleep in. We've run into that. We used to... <laughs> have like a it was like a 1970 something van um that the seats folded down into a bed and for the first couple of months of us being on the road that is what we did is we carried all of our stuff in it and then we slept in it um especially in city areas they get really weird about you sleeping in your van in like parking lots and stuff um and I'll tell you what, having some place that you can shower is nice. Um, and our van was not equipped for that. But we were just, we ran into more problems than what sleeping in our van solved um, by sleeping in our van. Like security for like gas stations or, you know, because unless we could find a Walmart to like park in, um... We, we would end up getting, like, 
you can't park here you have to go like we've had cops like knock on the windows and stuff when we were sleeping in our van um and so it's just nice to have a bed and a bathroom <laughs> flush and toilets are nice um but if we were doing more outdoor festivals or like actual music festivals and stuff where we can camp on site those are always really fun and we loved having our minivan uh that we could bring all of our camping gear and set up our tent and our camp shower and stuff. So we just knocked out three bracelets. That's not so bad. Let's see. What are we going to work on next? I'm going to do at least one bracelet with these guys. And this is, wow, these events can be dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> Sabaya says, I had a lady talk me into buying her soap just because she was so sweet and chatted with me when I told her I just moved here. It was good soap. Nice. <laughs> That's a nice dream, gnome. Hey, Lydia. I'm just making this. That's all I'm doing today, I feel like. Soap. Huh? That's good soap. That's good soap. Okay, so I've got enough to do two pairs of earrings with those. I'd like to be able to do two with those. I'll use another one of this charm. Oh, though I could have made earrings with it. Okay. So, we only have the six charms. Let's see if we can interspace it with... What's Pro doing? <laughs> I bet he's managing some mischief. Ah, Paige says, I miss Penzik for camping with my booth, but the show I'm doing tomorrow is five minutes from home. Is Penzik happening this weekend? Ah, right on, Elijah. Mm. Ah, Perian says it's a little irritating when the coordinator requires in their application that all pieces be handmade, yet they allow vendors who obviously sell items that are not. Yeah, I don't know. It's, um, how to put this? <laughs> Not to be like rules are for breaking, but it's, um, whenever we do juried craft shows, we send in the pictures of our pieces that are like, you know, um, our showcase pieces. So showing that yes, we do hand make a lot of our stuff, but there's folks who would go through and, and consider what I'm doing here, which is like assembly jewelry a little bit, because I did not make the rings. I did not make the charms. Actually, some of our rings we still have, we had coiled and cut ourselves, but um, it's assembled jewelry, um, which if you're going to be, you know, splitting hairs, at what point is uh, beadwork or bead stringing? If you do just a simple necklace that's like, you know, uh, Accuflex or something wire through just some pretty beads that you've curated. It's like, at what point does it go from being assembled jewelry to handmade? And so it's, we do varying degrees of handmade jewelry. And so while we send them pictures of our showcase pieces to show what we can do and what, you know, set at least 75% of our jewelry is completely handwoven chain mail or, you know, wire wrap and stuff like that. We do have, you know, about, you know, the remainder of our booth is filler simple pieces like this to flesh out our lower price point. And we do, you know, would include our deviant art gallery and our in, like all of our social media as well as our website, so that if they're really sticklers about it, it's like you can go see our entire booth lineup, everything that we make, you know, a good representation of it here at our website. And so we don't be misleading, but it's like here's our showcase stuff and here's everything else. And if they're gonna start splitting hairs, then uh, maybe it's a good event to not go do. Right on page. <laughs> Pro says, where there is a will, there is a way. Yes. 
Ah, Anna says I can't sell assembled because I have the artistic exemption certificate and it would be my luck to get called out for it. What's an artistic exemption certificate? I've never heard of that. Uh, right? Yeah. Penny says, hee hee, well, no one makes their own polymer clay but sell things made out of it. Exactly. So it's like, okay, guys. Ah, <laughs> uh, thanks, Lydia. I'm really enjoying the bird bath. I think... I'm going to be taking the styrofoam ball out of it just because when the bigger birds hop in it wobbles and puts them off of like they like whoa and like hop back out um so we're gonna have to do a revamped version but i i still absolutely love it ah right on I'll have to look into that. I'm going to take a moment for some shameless self-promotion. Uh, and we're going to be having an after party today. And there's no telling what we'll be up to. Probably more crafting, but who knows. Last week we went out and hung out in the hammock and spied on some birds. I don't even know if they were birds. I was just spying on my yard from the hammock uh, and took y'all with me. I cannot believe that was a week ago. Like, it's been a heck of a month this week. <laughs> so... Um, but yeah, if you guys would like to join us for the after party, you can, um, become one of our $1 Patreon supporters or Happy Crafter Club members. Links are down in the video description below. If you want to support the channel even further, we do have a $5 option. And if you do any of our $10 or up options, you also get, now that's just on our website, backtoearthcreations.com, is the $10 and up options. But on Patreon, we've got the one in five as well. Um, but for the $10 and up, we send out booty boxes, where uh, the $10 one, you just get some of our handmade cabochons and... Uh, like woodcuts, but at the $20 and up, you also get spools of para wire, which I don't have any directly on hand, but it's a decent sized spool. Um, definitely a very good sampling. Like I can usually make a couple of projects off of the uh, spools that I send out. But uh, in that way, you can use some of our artwork and your works of art, as well as get your hands on some of the same crafting materials that we use. And it's a great way to help support the channel and uh, just join the community and stuff. Though, no pressure at all. Like, all of our tutorials are still always free. We just hang out in the after party and kind of goof off. <laughs> right on. Hawk says, um, it was supposed to read, is there a difference between bead stringing and bead work? I do a lot of bead work, very little bead stringing. Um, I don't know what other folks' vocabulary is, but whenever I say bead stringing, um, I mean stuff like, let's see. To me, this is just bead strung. It is a single line of beads that have been threaded um, onto, like, I've got crimp beads going on on the ends. It's, there's no loom work, there's no bead embroidery. Like, this is just beads on a string, which I love. This is the, what, like, my very first pieces of jewelry were bead strung, and I'm not dissing it at all. I mean, it's beautiful. But whenever I, I hear or say bead work, I think of something that's done like a uh, peyote stitch or done on a loom or bead embroidery or something that's like really got some sometimes intricate work going on into it you know there's varying layers of complexity as with all things crafty but um 
so that's what I mean for whenever I say it. I don't know what it might mean to other folks, but, um, Ooh, Terry says, do you do any craft alongs with the same type of items that come in the booty boxes? Sometimes. Um, we kind of send out the very similar materials every month in the booty boxes. Like, it's the handmade cabochons that we make here in our home, uh, in our kiln. So it's different colors and shapes of fused glass. Um, but I'd like to do more with the wood cuts that we send out but we've been having trouble with our laser and so we're barely able to produce what where we send out in the boxes so i haven't really had a whole lot um but we do like i haven't had a whole lot to just keep for myself but sometimes we do some different things with it and uh like everything that we do there's a lot of room for me to improve um with like I really could use one more charm, couldn't I? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have to, let's do this one. And we'll just do one earring of that one. Um, like, I'd really like to get better about including in the club newsletter that we send out on Sundays, uh, recommended tutorials for like, what we're sending out this week and different things like that but um hey guys i'm back here we are doing more crafting there we go <laughs> okay let me type real quick there we go mm -hmm. hey erica hey sabaya we're back. Hey, Laura. There we are. Oh no, Anna says I literally just got out of the chair. And... Nope. Hey, Mary, how are you doing today? Hey, Lydia. <laughs> Witch and Gnome says good time to hit the like button. I appreciate that. Ooh wee all right so that's four bracelets in what was that two hours that's not very good <laughs> uh anna says what size are you making the bracelets before the clasp this bracelet is one two three four five six seven and a half um i would always always rather make the bracelets just a little long um, and then I'm still adding a one inch extender chain, which is about four rings of the 18 gauge three sixteenths inch rings, um, from Chainmail Joe on Amazon. Because it's much easier when we're in the booth and if somebody wants a bracelet sized down, uh, it's much easier and faster for us to trim some off than it is for, like, used to we'd bring, you know, like, four to eight trays of different chainmail rings and beads and, like, all sorts of stuff to try to do a lot of custom work in the booth. And we found it was just a much better uh, time investment to just make everything maybe half an inch to an inch longer and put some extender chain on it and then just trim it down in the booth as opposed to trying to anticipate what might need resized and trying to bring everything from our at-home craft room because also too especially with bracelets like this you can just hook it you could hook the clasp farther up you know in between the charms so yep another one done chunk it into the bucket you gotta make more <laughs> so oh i gotta do a tally mark so it was four bracelets and now i've been wearing this ear hook and i'm super sensitive like usually if something's gonna irritate me it irritates it in like the first five to ten minutes so i'm feeling pretty good yep about oh, caught it with my pants there we go <laughs> I think you crashed on purpose, so I have to watch another ad. Oh no! <laughs> I am not that wily. 
Mary says, well, how are you? I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm doing a lot better now, actually. Now, let's see. Ooh, does that have a little cut in it? It does. Oh, that's awesome. So now we can just open up the jump ring that on. That would be a real dick move to crash. <gasps> Did it? <I> don't... <laughs> gotcha, babe. Oh, nice. Very cool. So yeah, these ear hooks are these lever back 304 surgical steel. You can open that little loop and put on put the charm on directly and it's got enough room that there's a decent w w wiggle and drape to it um mm says do you have a rule of th thumb for sizing when making necklaces i typically don't make any necklaces shorter than 18 inches but we do have room to be able to size that down in the booth um and then uh, we put at least four to five inches of extender chain on the 18 inch necklaces, um, like our chains here. So if we sell any pendants, we offer an upsale of our chains. And so the base chain is one size and this is the 20 gauge platinum tone from theringlord.com and then we put four inches of the 19 gauge enameled iron in black ice uh, on the end and that allows whoever gets the chain to um, hook it anywhere along that along that part and that way they can adjust the neckline to what they're wearing or how they're feeling that day. Because um, not all the necklines of your tops or dresses that you're wearing may have the same, like one might be a little lower scooped than another. So it gives you a little bit of versatility in how you length, like how you wear the chain. Um, and we do that same principle on our necklaces as well. Now, oftentimes if we have somebody request that they're like, can I have a 36 inch necklace? Um, we'll often splice two together or we can do custom work, like take a custom order and then make it when we get home and ship it to the client. So it's always, always nice to have lots of options. And really most of the time, if you just ask the customer, um, like if you give them the option of, well, this is what we carry, but we can do custom work. If they're into it, they'll be all over it. Like that's for the first couple of years with our business. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I was not very good at making jewelry, um, but I was very good. Randy actually was the one who was very, very good at um, customer service. And just like, so between his skill and my enthusiasm, we were able to... Um, make our customers happy and if you make customers happy and they come back and keep buying stuff then you can keep your business afloat and hopefully in my case get better at making jewelry <laughs> so Ooh. sarah says i'm sure you may have already said but where did you find the charms i got these from aliexpress from a wide variety of sellers so i don't have any sellers in particular that um that i'm like yes on this seller no on that one mm -hmm. uh bye lydia how is your boo-boo finger it's good it's just still creepy looking like i'm not entirely certain if i'm gonna lose the nail or not yet like it hasn't eight minutes. Woo, eight minutes till the stream ends and then we start the after party at 7 30. But uh, I still haven't lost the nail yet, so I'm like, mm, I guess it's hanging in there. But man, it hurts, though. <laughs> uh, Kay says, will the resin moons hold up to the liver of salt for treatment? Yes. In my experience, yes. But you may want to put some latex over them for if you're polishing the piece. Because the resin scuffs up pretty easily. 
um, I had gotten year, like, gosh, three summers ago, two or three summers ago. Um, it's going to sound way more dramatic than it actually is, but I was trying to save some kids off of a waterfall at the local lake. Um, and I, I was, I had to get from where the kids were on this like boulder across to the bank and I had to like grab onto this rock to pull myself up against the current like to keep from getting swept down and it had bent back like because I had to dig my nails in it had bent back this thumb and this finger uh really badly the fingernail and I got like an infection underneath them and my thumb is almost completely recovered like it's still got a little bit of a weird spot right here um, but this finger's really been having a heck of a time, um, recovering. And then, so like the nail bed was weakened and then I don't know what I was doing, but I had like reached or like, and it, and it like bashed my nail into the wall. So it stoved it in as well as ripping it up. And it was terrible and it hurt so bad. And I was like, am I finally going to lose this freaking creepy finger? Like that's why for like two years I've been keeping my nails polished because if y'all saw my nail beds, you'd be like, your fingers are going to fall off. And I was like, yep. <laughs> so, um, but it's fine. It's, it's fine. It'll be fine. It is what it is. <laughs> So there goes my career as a hand model, but I'm just glad that like my thumbnails coming back. Okay. Um, and the kids turned out like they were fine. Like I was able to go and get their dad. Cause I was like, I know he has rope in his truck and we can just like, if we can get them to put the rope around, like underneath their arms, we can pull them up stream away from like the craggly rocks and the waterfall and stuff. So and it turned out it turned out fine except for one of the moms just threw herself into the water so we had to dig, pull her out as well um but that's fine yeah no it's I'm, I'm keeping an eye on it and it's it is doing better it's just if i could just stop re-hurting it um would be great <laughs> so Ooh, right on, don't you know? I love those behind the ear ear cuffs. We need to make a bunch more. We sold out. Oof. It's been a busy decade. Like, I'm just, I'm tired. I want to take a day off. <laughs> Hey babe, I just had deja vu. Alright, I'll get the pepper. Okay. <laughs> um, Tammy, these are 304 surgical steel lever back ear hooks, which I really, really love. Now this one seems a little misaligned, but that's okay. Yep. I wonder if there's anything we can do. Ah, uh, gotcha with you know. It's only like nine or ten bucks to get one of those creepy silicone disembodied ears that we use. And um or you could sculpt your own or just print some out on like paper. Might be all sorts of different ways. Right on, Brooke. Do you know what weaves you want to uh, tackle first? Uh, on Amazon, Anna. Uh, actually, in our booth display videos, as well as any of the more recent ear cuff tutorials where the thumbnail is the ear cuff displayed on one of those creepy disembodied ears, um, there's a link in the video description exactly to where I purchased it on Amazon. And it came with the stand and everything. Now, I don't think the silicone itself is particularly durable. Um, but I think I'll get a couple years of use out of it. 
But yeah, if ever in doubt, first thing you should do is check the video description of our videos because we put a lot of work into trying to get those to be as accurate as possible. Um, I'm still, after all this time, uh, working on trying to update our older videos, but we have, last I checked, over 800 videos and about 700 of them uh, still need the links updated. Because uh, I had messed up and tried to like bulk edit. And then this one's loop isn't there. So ah, I just hit my head on the tripod. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to fool about with that one. Ooh, right on, Brooke. Very cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a good idea, which you know. Um, Randy and I used to use a, like, one of those mirrors with a handle, um, and then I ended up covering a mirror with some chain mail, and that's what we will hand it to people for them to look at it, because we were having problems with the mirror that was on an easel, uh, just glaring and defeat people's faces, uh, when it was sunny, or, like, the ceiling lights or anything like that, so. <clears throat> okay one more pair and then I'm gonna start putting on I don't know if I should hang I don't really think I have any teardrops right now like any gemstone or glass ones I need to do a day on the torch and just make a whole bunch of glass teardrops um but today is not that day Another one that doesn't have a loop in it, that's fine. Okay. So there's that. And now, let us have a good rummage. And so, like, this is one that we purchased on AliExpress that I'm kind of like, mm, I don't know if I'd get it again. But my plan... If you can see how the charm itself is very flat it lacks any sort of depth but I'm thinking if I can put just the charm in and electroform it because electroplating would be just coating it in a little bit of copper but if I can electroform it and then come in with a file and like really let it get a big build up and then file to add in my own depth and then plate again just to get it to be nice and smooth like I don't know that might be really really cool but it might end up also being way more work than what it's worth but I don't know we'll see I actually don't even know if I can use stainless steel to electroform on hmm. so I know I can't with aluminum I've tried it it sucked <laughs> so Right on. Hey, Benjamin. I'm so glad everybody's okay. Okay, so here's just some little feathers. I don't know if I want to use a feather or... Rummaging. Oop, got caught on a table. There we go. Okay. Do 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 rummage time. Do 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 rummage time. Um, I could do green beans, or we've got some spinach. Like we've got some lettuce. I'll check and see if it's kind of green beans. Oh, okay. Are you okay with having green beans twice in the same day? No. Okay, cool. Do, 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 do. Nope, it's not in that tray. Not in that tray. Not in that tray. Okay, it's not in any of those trays. I'm looking spec 
Do what? Do what, babe? Ooh, some little dagger beads would be super cute hanging down. Two. Three. Four. So I'll use those four. I said I've been informed it is indeed prime green bean time. Excellent. Let the green bean commence. Not in this one. Where are the heck is? Did I dream that I have them? Where in the heck are they? Hey Adelaide, how's it going? Haha, -ha, here they are. Maybe. Nope. I thought I had a smaller. Maybe we ordered them and they just haven't arrived. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Meh. Ugh, this isn't precariously perched. I don't know what is. Okay. <laughs> just scuttling around <sighs> okay there we go so now we can come in and I'm going to use more of the aluminum 18 gauge 1 8 inch Ooh. oh goodness I am five minutes over okay guys this was today's live stream I still look like a deranged person there we go um I don't know if doing something with my hair is actually gonna help with looking deranged um thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with us today um I've had a really good time this really actually like chilled me out Kara says am I in time to say hi before you go <laughs> hey Kara no and he says no <laughs> But uh, thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out. We look forward to seeing you in the after party. Um, moving forward uh, until until things calm down a little bit or I just get my life together, um, we're only going to be doing tutorial. Like our new schedule moving forward is our Monday shop updates, Thursday premieres, and Friday live streams. Yo, y'all get along. Um. And then we're still posting daily over on the Vonster blog and have premieres on Thursdays at the Vonster blog as well. So there's still quite a bit going on if y'all still want to get your daily fix of just our antics and things that we're up to and some behind the scenes stuff. We do have that over on the Vonster blog. But um, thank you all so, so much for being here and we will see y'all next time. So until then, happy crafting. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>